Thank you, Cheryl. If you'd like to read the scripture one Sunday, we would love to have you be part of our team. You can just let us know. Send an email to the church or talk to somebody at the Connection Point desk. We'd love to have you be part of this. Um, let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your word this morning. We pray that your Holy Spirit would come and bring it to life in us and through us. Change us, Lord. Give us, give us ears to hear. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. An evangelism strategy that every person in the church can participate in. That's the goal. That's what we're trying to do here is put together something that everyone, no matter if you're an introvert or, or an extrovert, whether you're gifted or goofy, whether you're a church bell or a church mouse, every one of us can participate in this. Every one of us is commanded by Jesus to go and make disciples. That's the mission. And you and I, we'd better be uh, ready to answer how we did with his mission when we see him face to face. And so we're walking through this, uh, this strategy together over these last few weeks. It's the, the bell strategy from the book Surprise the World. And we've looked at the, uh, the B in bells, which is bless others. We've looked at E for eat with others. And, you know, those two ways to reach people, uh, they're not really that scary, are they? I mean, you've been blessed to be a blessing, right? You can do that. Uh, most of you have to eat. <laughs> you might as well eat with someone else who has to eat too, right? I mean, so these things aren't scary. They're not hard. Um, you know, but today we're going to look at the first L in the Bell's model there. And the L stands for listen. Listening to the Holy Spirit is the third missional habit which we have to develop if we're going to be on mission with Jesus. Listening to the Holy Spirit. And this habit, you see, this is where the fun really gets started. Because the Lord is going to speak to you and guide you uh, in your day-to-day -day mission to help others say yes to Jesus. If you listen. If the Lord tells Samuel after he gets Samuel's attention, see I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. Yeah. Have you ever been part of something like that? Yeah. You know, when, you, when we are part of something that only the Lord could orchestrate, it is awesome. It is so much fun. Many of you have been, you know. So, uh, someone came to mind that, that you felt like, I, I need to call or I need to pray for this person, um, and only to discover that they needed your call, or they needed your prayer in the exact moment that you prayed. You know, these things, they're not coincidental. The Holy Spirit prompts you to do something, or, or, and when you do it, it makes the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. You know, Duncan Campbell, he was a preacher in the uh, revival in the Hebrides in the 1940s. And he tells the story of a farmer in his field who was praying. He was praying uh, about Greece. Not the Greece you put on a tractor, but the country, Greece. Afterward, he asked him, why was he praying? The man said, I, I don't know. I had a, a burden in my spirit and God said, you pray, there is someone in Greece that is in a bad situation. So I prayed until I got a release. Well, sometime later, a few years later, the farmer is in a meeting listening to a missionary. And the man was describing a time when he was working in Greece and he had had some serious trouble. Well, the two after the meeting got together and started to compare notes. And wouldn't you know it, it was the exact same day that God had burdened a farmer on a little island off the coast of Scotland to pray for a man in Greece whose name he didn't even know. God does this stuff. He wants you and I to be part of it. See, the Lord is at work even today. And we can be part of that adventure if we will take time to listen and obey. But, you know, one of the obstacles to listening, especially to the Holy Spirit, is trying to figure out who's doing the talking. Am I right? Samuel has the same problem in this passage. The Lord calls to him, but he doesn't know it's the Lord. He thinks it's Eli. So how do I know that it's the Holy Spirit talking to me and not what's rattling around inside of my head? Well, there's a couple ways. The first 
is you need to set aside some time to listen to his voice in prayer. You need to do that. The scripture says that Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord. Now, the temple hadn't been built yet, not Solomon's temple. Solomon hadn't even been born yet. Uh, but they're in the tabernacle where the ark was kept. It's a big tent. Samuel was sleeping there in the tabernacle. He was in a holy place. You see, he was, he was set apart. He, he had set a car. And of course, you know, it was evening. It was quiet. He wasn't watching, uh, you know, cable news or scrolling through fake book. He was, he was in a place where he could hear. Do you set aside a time during the week in your prayers where you are quiet and you just listen? I know that might be hard because I come with my prayers and I got this and this and this and this and this and this that I'm going over with the Lord. I got my list. Samuel, in order to listen, we got to shut up. Funny how that works, right? Lord gave us two ears and one mouth. Go figure. Another way to figure out if it's the Lord or if it's just us is to make a habit of listening. This is what Samuel does. He made it a habit. He knew Eli couldn't see and needed assistance. So he was ready when the call came. Three times Samuel hears his name and he responds, here I am. And he goes to Eli. You see, he was ready. Here I am. Here I am needs to be a habit. We need to be ready and available. We need to have our ears ready. Is the Lord speaking? What's he going to do? When we walk into a room, Lord, is there something going on here that I need to be aware of? So that when he speaks, we're here I am. Here I am. No. When we are, the Lord will do something that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. You know, another way to, to uh, figure out that it's the Lord that's speaking and not just what's rattling around in your head is uh, I think about the story of Peter in the boat and Jesus is walking on water. <laughs> and you know what Peter says? To, to the, if that's you, Lord, call me to you. Tell me to get out of the boat. So what does Jesus do? Okay, get out of the boat. <laughs> Sometimes... When the Lord's prompting us, we need to get out of the boat. We need to take that step. So how can you be sure that what you hear is really the Lord? You know, many times I, I, I hear him and do what he asks, but, uh, you know, the Red Sea doesn't part. I'm not walking on water. Sometimes I'll get out of the boat and I find myself up to here in it. You know, people aren't slain in the spirit. And I'm left wondering if what I heard and did was real. Lord, was that really you or was I just, you know, getting ahead of you? Well, let me share with you from a receiving point of view. In the, the first couple of years that, that Alice and I were married, uh, we didn't go on vacations. I was a youth director and there wasn't a whole lot of extra money for that kind of stuff. But the year that Mac was born, and uh, he's our oldest, uh, we managed to put together a three-day trip to Boston. I'm a history nerd, and so I love American history, so that's the place you go, right? So we go and we see all the sights and do all the stuff in Boston, and we realized while we were there that the Red Sox were playing at home. I had never been to Fenway, so I said, babe we gotta go she says okay we'll go so we go we take the train uh, to the park and we get off the train and I buy tickets from the first guy I see <laughs> that's what my wife said <laughs> I didn't even bargain with the guy I was so excited Bought the tickets, we go into the park, we're sitting on the first base side, several rows up, and I got a view of the green monster. And I'm sitting there and I'm just soaking it all in and I'm thinking, this is awesome. And I go to start talking to Al here on the right and she's not very happy with me. Because I had wasted all that money. I didn't even haggle with the guy, you know? Which my wife, she's a bargain hunter. So that's really, she's, she's after me about this. And I realized that, that uh, right there that there isn't going to be any hot dogs in a t-shirt to mark the occasion <laughs> during the game. So we're just sitting there and, and um, I start talking to this guy. 
because he's in a better mood. And so <laughs> we're, we're having a conversation and we're getting to know each other a little bit. And uh, he's from Chicago, you know, and he's telling me he's in town for business. Oh, what do you do? I'm a youth director from Florida. Oh, that's great. We're talking back and forth, doing all this stuff. He's in town because he's, uh, his business is about to be bought and he's, you know, he's real excited about this deal that's going through. And, and I was like, man, that's awesome, you know? And so we keep talking, we go yada, 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 a couple of innings down and he, he, says, uh, he says to me, you know, I hope you don't think I'm weird, but the Lord told me to give you this and hands me a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I can't take that. And so I'm saying, no, no, no. And he's not, he insists. He says, no, the Lord told him to give that to us. And I didn't want him to get in trouble with Jesus. So, <laughs> so, uh, okay. So thank you very much. But Al and I are sitting here in shock. We, 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 this guy doesn't know why he's giving us $100. I don't know why he's giving us $100, you know. But here's my wife, and she's tearing up because she understands that this guy listening to the Lord means that the Lord is listening to her. That, that the Lord knows her and cares about her and will provide for her even at Fenway Park, when her husband pays more than he should for tickets. <laughs> it was an incredible moment of grace as the Lord reveals himself to us. And in that moment, I turn and I look at my wife and I say, you want to get some hot dogs and a t-shirt? <laughs> oh, man. You may never know. What you're listening may mean to someone else. It may make no sense to you at all. You may find yourself more troubled because you did it than if you didn't do it. But you know what? It's not about you, is it? The habit of listening to the Holy Spirit requires us to be able to recognize God's voice. And the only way we're going to recognize God's voice is if we spend time in his word. Verse 7, it says this. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. You see, knowing the word is directly related to knowing the Lord. The Holy Spirit is never going to say anything that's going to contradict what's in the scriptures. Never. That's how you can tell. That's how you can understand. Here's what God is saying to me. Does it line up with what the scriptures say? You know, so when you hear his voice, when you sense his promptings, when you get his nudges, you can start to discern. This is not my desire. This is not my fear. This is what the Lord is saying. I need to act. You know, Samuel didn't know it was the Lord calling him because he didn't know the word. It hadn't been revealed to him yet. So Eli gives great advice to Samuel and to us. If we have ears to hear it. Verse 9, he says, So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. It is a terrific habit to do as you pick up the word and read it. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You see, the Lord reveals himself through the scriptures. I can't begin to tell you the number of times that I have read a passage of Scripture and something that has stood out to me and I can't make heads or tails of it. Why that part is standing out. You know, sometimes it makes me nervous. <laughs> Other times I just scratch my head and I go, well, okay, great, that's nice to know. But two or three days later, all of a sudden I'm in a situation where the Lord says, that's for them. You share that with them now. I'm like, oh, I get it can't tell you how many times that happens. Yeah. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I would, tell, I would tell you that ought to be what comes out of your mouth before you start reading. Listening to the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Listening to the Holy Spirit will also cause you to start listening to others. I mean, listen, I mean really listening to others. You know, when we do that, that's going to surprise the world. Because everything in the world right now is shouting, isn't it? Demanding it be heard. Yeah. 
You see, we believe that we have to convince others of our point of view, that we uh, strive to answer their questions, debate their objections, relieve their doubts. How many times in a conversation are you thinking about what you're going to say next while they're talking? Guilty. You know, when it comes to evangelism, we think that it's all about having the right words to say. So many people say, I, I, it makes me nervous to share my faith because I'm afraid I won't know what to say. Well, let me ask you something. Is that how the Lord deals with us? Does he answer every objection? Does he provide a reason for every doubt? Does he debate us into faith? <laughs> no. No, he doesn't. Not even close. He listens. Trust me, I got a whole list of things I'm still waiting on answers for. He listens. Being an ear for someone else will give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to melt hearts and tear down walls. My friend Jeff Dunrankin said that listening is the soup kitchen of the suburbs. For people who have everything else, giving them your ear will be powerful. To ask someone, how's your soul doing these days? And then listen the way that the Lord listens is a gift. You know, several years ago, I was chaperoning a middle school dance. Uh, one of my kids was attending. I was paired with another uh, parent and our job was to hold up the wall. You know how that works, right? And so uh, we're there making small talk over the music that's blaring, you know. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. And we're standing this close to each other, but we're screaming, you know, what do you do? And so as we're talking, you know, she says, I I'm a doctor. I said, well, I I'm a minister. And I asked, you know, do you go to church anywhere? And she said, well, I grew up in church, but I stopped believing in God a while ago. And I said, whoa. <laughs> I said, you want to talk about that? And she said, no. <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit told me to shut up and listen. Just shut up and listen, which is very hard for a preacher to do. I'm just telling you. And after a few seconds, she began to tell me how the years of working in the NICU unit with babies born to drug abusers has caused her to question God's goodness. She went on to describe the suffering of these innocent babies that she dealt with and, and was asking questions like, how could God allow that kind of thing? And she shared her questions and her pain, and I just listened. And the more that I listened, the more I could see the walls around her heart beginning to crack. I could see that she had not given up on the Lord completely. And my ear just let her know that the Lord had not given up on her. Never spoke to her after that conversation. And as we were leaving, you know, I, I said, listen, uh, I just want you to know that the Lord hears you and he knows your pain. Was it? I have no idea what the Holy Spirit did after that. Not my job. It's not about me, is it? Do you want to be part of something? that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle? Make the hair on their arms stand up? You know, for many of us, the answer is yes, I absolutely do. I want to be part of that. But we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. We're too busy doing all our other stuff. We don't recognize His voice. We don't understand when He's prompting us to do something. You know, for a lot of us, we can't hear Him when He does say something. Because he's standing outside, knocking. He hasn't been invited in. You know, for a lot of us, we, um, we invite Jesus to come into certain parts of our life, but not the whole thing. Jesus, you can come and be part of this, and you can be part of that here, and I definitely need you to be part of this here. And, and so this is, my, this is my family, and so dear God, do something with this. But over here... <laughs> Over here, you got a family like that too, huh? Um, <laughs> this is mine, Lord, and you know, this is off limits. This room is closed. You can't come in here. And we totally miss what he might be saying to us. 
We run around as a church. In church, we do all kinds of things. We do. But can we, do we take time to listen? For, for most of us, what we need to hear is this. Revelation 3.20, Jesus says this. He says, pay attention. I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and have fellowship with him and him with me. That's the first thing you need to hear. If you're not hearing anything else, maybe it's because we got Jesus outside. You realize that Jesus doesn't say that in Revelation to unbelievers. He says that to the church. Church is so busy. We got so many things going on. We put Jesus outside. Is it okay if I come back in? We need to hear that knock. You won't hear the Holy Spirit until you open the door and invite him in. But the Holy Spirit is speaking. Even now, he's speaking to engage us in his mission. But we have to develop the habit of listening. Like with Samuel, God is persistent. He keeps calling, keeps calling. But we must take time to be quiet and listen. We got to learn to recognize his voice and say, here I am. Then, then we'll get to be part of the adventure that only he can provide. So in addition to blessing others and eating with others, I want us to take some time this week, set it aside to just listen. Listen for his voice. Open up your Bible and pray, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Let's pray together. Here we are, Lord. What are you saying to us? What's the Lord saying to you this morning? Is he calling you to do something? Is he putting somebody on your mind, on your heart? Lord, I pray for each person here today and those who are watching online. Give us grace to hear your voice. Help us to understand the scriptures when we open them up. Speak to us through them, even if it's a word for somebody else. Give us faith, Lord, to get out of the boat. Give us love to listen to you and to others. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.